Okay, there's a lot to cover here, but I'll try to be quick. A new Guttmacher report came out that found that there were over a million abortions in 2023, representing a 10% increase over 2020, and the highest number since 2012. Abortion advocates point to this as evidence that Dobbs and abortion bans that have happened since Dobbs don't work, and they don't actually decrease abortions. This is totally untrue, let me tell you why. First of all, Guttmacher has reported an increase in abortions in the United States since 2017, which is weird because they were decreasing since the 1990s, and then they started increasing in 2017, and apparently nobody knows why. In this report, Guttmacher talks about how in that time period, there was about the same number of clinics nationally, people were using about the same levels of contraception and the same kinds of contraception, teen pregnancy rate continued to decline, Gallup found that economic confidence was generally good, in fact, Gallup found that more people were saying that they might want larger families. Guttmacher did find that there was a higher proportion of abortions done by pills rather than surgery, and that may have made a difference, but this is before pills were generally available via telemedicine, so the access didn't change a ton. So why have abortions been increasing since 2017? We don't really know. And until we know, it's hard to say how Dobbs interplays with these other factors. But there are plenty of examples in the Guttmacher report itself to show that the laws make a huge difference. One of them is that a lot of people traveled from states with bans to states without them to get abortions, but for them to be able to do that required, as Guttmacher put it, monumental effort on the part of abortion advocates. Bans on abortion have such a drastic effect that it takes monumental effort to try to counterbalance them. Guttmacher explains that there was a 10% increase in abortion nationally, but that covers really big differences in different states. The states with bans saw little to no recorded abortions at all, and the states bordering them saw the biggest increases, 37%. But even the states that weren't bordering states with bans saw an increase of 17%. This is because, as Guttmacher explains, those state residents were getting more abortions than before, regardless of other people traveling. Why is that? One of the reasons that we kind of touched on was the availability of pills via telemedicine. When the pandemic hit, the FDA got rid of the requirements that abortion pills be dispensed in person by a provider and started letting people mail them. This increased abortion access and abortion rates across the board because regulations regarding abortion change abortion rates. There are other reasons too. One of them is shield laws where pro-choice states will say that if a doctor in their state illegally mails abortion pills to a pro-life state, they won't help the pro-life state enforce their laws. Again, underscoring that laws and regulation change access and change rates. Guttmacher appears to have anticipated that their side was going to try to point to this result, a million abortions in 2023, to say that Dobbs makes no difference, abortion bans don't work, and we should give it up. And Guttmacher doesn't want them to say that. So they have a whole subsection that says, increases do not negate the impact of anti-abortion policies. Mostly they talk about the additional resources that were required to help people travel to get abortions. They also talk about people who got abortions outside the formal healthcare setting, usually meaning illegally, usually pills. And they also briefly mention that anti-abortion policies meant some were, as they put it, forced to continue their pregnancies. Meaning, of course, that anti-abortion policies mean some people who would have gotten abortions don't get abortions. We already knew this to be true. There's decades of research to show that when you restrict abortion, at least in the near term, not only do abortion rates go down, but birth rates go up. Because again, people who were going to get abortions don't. There was an analysis of the Texas heartbeat law that found this to be the case. And then there was this more recent analysis of pro-life states across the nation with the control group being pro-choice ones that found that after Dobbs, there were 32,000 more births. Whether you think that decrease in abortion is good or bad, whether you think it's good because it's saving babies or it's bad because it's stripping women of their bodily rights, the underlying point is the same, which is that regulations around abortion, bans on abortion, laws related to abortion, they affect abortion access and they affect abortion rates. At Secular Pro-Life, we talk about decreasing both the demand and the supply of abortion. Decreasing demand looks like helping people to avoid pregnancy when they don't want to be pregnant, helping to support them better when they are pregnant, that kind of thing. Decreasing demand is pretty uncontroversial. Pro-choice people should want to decrease demand too because nobody wants a woman to get an abortion because she felt like she didn't have a choice. But for pro-life people, decreasing supply is also important, and that looks like passing laws to regulate or restrict or ban abortion. The laws around abortion indicate to a given society what we think is ethical and who we think is worth defending. And they also decrease abortion rates. We want to decrease abortion, empower people to avoid pregnancy when they don't want to be pregnant, empower people to parent and care for their children, and also ban abortion.